Well, of course, Monet, um, um, Constable um, is, um, doesn't uh, stand alone in art history. Um, every artist, every movement begets precursors. And among uh, Constable's immediate uh, precursors is the artist Thomas Gainsborough, who will be better known to most people as a painter of uh, fashionable society portraits in Georgian uh, England. Uh, what you may not know is that he aspired to be a, a landscape painter and to become better known as a landscape painter. And Constable was very conscious of the fact that uh, he was following in Gainsborough's footsteps, uh, uh, even uh, to the extent of coming from the same county and painting uh, from the same uh, landscapes. So in this painting from the 1740s, uh, we note uh, the treatment of the trees, the stippling of the leaves, and the effects of the clouds. And it's probably worth noting also that the color range, the palette that uh, uh, Gainsborough is using here um, hasn't changed a lot by the time Constable comes to paint his landscapes. And then these in turn, this in turn stands in a tradition of landscape painting um, developed in 17th century Holland in the Netherlands and um, the great exponent of which is Jakob von Roosdaal. Uh, and um, Roosdaal was an artist who began to be reappraised by European landscape painters in the first half of the 19th century, uh, reappraised by um, artists um, like Constable and members of the Norwich School of Landscape uh, Painters, painters in watercolours, um, the kind that the British, the English artists are famous for, renowned for, uh, in the uh, late 18th and early uh, 19th uh, century. And then, of course, um, uh, the 17th century uh, Dutch landscape painters uh, came to be admired by the artists we call um, the painters of the Barbizon school of French landscape pain painters. All of these stand in a line of succession. There's a genealogy, there's a whakapapa there um, that uh, links right through uh, to the Impressionists and back to the 17th century Dutch uh, landscape uh, painters. Well, the group of artists who were almost immediately affected by Constable, who benefited from the raised status he had achieved for the humble genre of landscape, took themselves off to the village of Barbizon near the forest of Fontainebleau, 50 odd kilometers south southeast of Paris, and there formed a fairly fluid community of plan, plein air landscape painters. As the material and equipment of painting became more portable, so the artists more easily set up outdoor studios to paint on plein air, out in the open, sur le motif from direct observation. And um, we, can, we can itemize the, the small inventions that radically changed uh, the practice of painting out of doors that enabled artists to set up studios really out of doors when previously oil painting had been such a cumbersome practice um, and had been largely studio bound. First came the invention of oil paints in tubes in the early 1840s. You wouldn't think that such a thing might radicalize painting, but you can see that with oil paints and tubes, you can um, pack them into the new painter's boxes, hang them over your shoulder. Then, with the invention of the collapsible easel uh, and, uh, and uh, with a basket with your brushes and so on, uh, and, and maybe some lunch and an excellent wine, a folding stool, uh, an umbrella, all, all of the paraphernalia of, 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 of um, landscape painting, you could take out into the open uh, with you. Um, now, the background to all of this, of course, is the Industrial Revolution, which came late in France, um, but it was from the Industrial Revolution that the principles of the standardization of units, prefabrication and mass production really revolutionized the materials uh, of, of, of painting. And uh, so um, it, somebody hit upon the idea of making uh, canvases to a standard uh, format and shape so that somebody like Monet uh, could, could wake up one morning and say, oh, there's plenty of weather today. I feel a fit of painting um, uh, haystacks coming on. Uh, go off and, uh, and, and obtain 20 landscape-sized um, or landscape-format 
uh, pre-prepared uh, canvases and head off and uh, knock them off, if that's the appropriate expression, uh, one, by, one after the other, capturing that, that sort of half hour um, a window of opportunity before the conditions changed uh, into something uh, else. Um, so that you can see that um, uh, this, together with the invention of photography, uh, which again caused artists to look at reality, to look at nature with completely new eyes, and then the invention of the railways um, was going to revolutionise a painting. And one of the things that I say in the floor talks, and I don't think it's too far-fetched, that, that in a sense, the paintings that you see there document the progress of the uh, building of the railways in France, document the network, because wherever the railways went, the Impressionists were able to pick up their portable painting materials, get on the train, hop off, and paint uh, uh, from uh, nature. But you can bet your boots that the railway station is never far behind uh, the artist uh, when he's painting or she's painting uh, raw um, unspoiled uh, nature. There in the background would be the uh, uh, constant noise of trains rattling across the landscape and uh, the whistle uh, of, the, of the train. Well, in his monograph on Constable, Paul Reynolds observes that, and I quote, the different degrees of immediacy, vitality, wholeness of effect, and naturalism of color, which we see in Oué, Troyon, Rousseau, Millet, Chantreuil and Boudin is due in very large measure to Constable. All of these artists of the uh, Barbizon school, painting in the forest of Fontainebleau, stand in the immediate line of descent from Constable as he was absorbed into French culture and French artistic uh, consciousness. 